Hey there folks, Rel here. In the background you'll see some gameplay from Planetside 2 as I share some thoughts on better gaming. And today I'd like to talk about shaping a community, or at the very least, avoiding a toxic one. And I'm glad to say that Planetside 2 has a pretty good community right now, and despite all the complaining about who is the, the most overpowered faction, or what needs a buff, or what needs a nerf, it's, um, it's pretty tame in the grand scheme of things. But it might not always be like this, especially as Planetside 2 moves toward the MLG scene. And just like crime increases as the population grows, so can the hate and discontent if you let it. Communities are evolving constantly, and it's the job of each and every one of us. So devs, players, YouTubers, it doesn't matter. It's our job to make sure that things keep progressing for the better. When you look at a game like Call of Duty or Heroes of New Earth, both games have notoriously terrible communities. Very, very hostile environments. In fact, it's so bad that S2, which is the team behind Heroes of New Earth, is making a completely new MOBA game called Strife, with the premise of making a better community. And you know it's a sad state of things when the major feature, you know, the main draw to your game, is that people who play it aren't going to constantly be told to go and uninstall the game, or that they should never play X Hero or Y Hero again, or my personal favorite, go kill yourself, you're a worthless human being, you contribute nothing to society. The irony in that one is always enough to make me laugh. And a lot of these problems, they stem from competition. As human beings, we're very competitive in nature. We need to be stronger or better looking than the other guy so that we can get a mate. We need to be better qualified than that person so that we can get the job or get the bonus. And that's completely fine. That's what drives us to become better. And in fact, that's the reason why I play multiplayer games. I want to be able to blast the guy in the face and then happy dance on their corpse. And truth be told, I'm a huge elitist at heart. And this in itself is fine. Like I said, competition is what drives most multiplayer games, and a little smack talk is never an issue. Tribes practically invented proper smack talk, and it's a great game franchise with an even greater community behind it. The problem is when those games, you know, those environments, become hostile. Thanks to the wonders of the internet, in a game like Call of Duty, a 12-year-old with an anger management problem can jump into an open lobby, he can start spewing profanity and talking about your mother, even though his own balls haven't dropped yet. There's a reason why people use the term COD kids to describe things that they don't like or they don't want to see in their own game or their own community. Being anonymous online creates a shield from responsibility and repercussion, and if you've ever played Han or Dota, tell me with a straight face that you've never talked smack after your team lost and then you left the lobby or you quit the game entirely, just so that the other guy could not respond back to you, just so that you could have the last word. I bet anything that if the internet let you punch people in the face, a lot of this would probably go away. People would generally watch what they say and the world would be a much nicer place. And yes, I just said that punching people in the face would make the world a much nicer place. And you could say, whoa, 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 hey, Rel, you could always mute the kid. But unfortunately, that's not the way we as human beings, especially male teens and young adults, usually handle these types of situations. Because we thrive on conflict, we like to express ourselves, and we have an excruciating need to feel right about something. Or otherwise justify our actions to our peers, especially if you're the one that's in the wrong. So even if I and eight other people mute or ignore this one bad influence, there's going to be at least two other people who don't. And instead, they're content with just yelling at the kid to shut up, uh, and they're content with talking smack back and forth. So instead of muting that one person, we have to mute two other people as well. Negative feelings are just so easy for us to knee-jerk against and to manifest. I mean, even in the most recent presidential election, for every one positive tweet said about a presidential candidate, there were three negative ones. It's just it's so easy to be negative and so hard to acknowledge opinions outside of your own. And if a community is very toxic, if most of the people act like douchebags, you then have no problem acting like a douchebag as well. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. Now, I'd love to think that I'm better than that. I'd love to think that, uh, that I'm going to be the one who's going to be acting like a mature adult and just walk away. But that's hit or miss. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. When thousands upon thousands of people are acting like jerks, so in an instance like Call of Duty or Heroes of New Earth or Dota, it's hard to find the high road. In fact, it's hard to say that the high road even exists. So is this really a threat to Planetside 2? 
I'd say yes, especially as Planetside 2 moves more toward Major League Gaming, and I don't think that that's the root of the problems, not even close, but I do think that the more competition you have in a game, the more people start to pick sides. Just like in football, I mean, not even American football, if you look, uh, if you take it a step further and think about football in the UK, you have people literally brawling with one another over pride in their team or hatred of another, and that's just the culture. Like I said, competition is fine, but when you combine that with anger online and not having repercussions for what you say, people vent their frustrations by trolling and offering up death threats, basically emotionally abusing people because they can. This in turn breeds more hate, which brings down the overall community. This isn't something that I'm speculating about, it's been seen time and time again. So how do we keep this from happening to Planetside 2? I'm not even talking about when Planetside 2 really hits the MLG scene, I'm talking about a normal day today in Planetside 2, or a normal day five years from now. The first thing that we need to do is establish what is acceptable behavior and what's not, and this takes a long time to do. This is where everyone needs to play a part, it doesn't matter if you're just one person or if you're an outfit of many. There's a, there's a sociology experiment that I always wanted to try. I wanted to take a bunch of people and just go to the mall. And while standing in line, or sitting down relaxing, basically whenever you'd have a free moment where you're just wasting time, I'd like those people to exercise. So stretching, push-ups, squats, nothing disruptive, nothing that would injure anyone around you. Just simple stuff, right? And you would get all sorts of looks, and maybe a stern talking to from the mall security riding around on the segways, because this isn't the societal norm. This isn't what we have come to expect, it's not how we've decided to shape our community. Now, just imagine if people jogged or power walked everywhere they went, like uh, from class to class, you know, down the hall at work, or if we had a stress ball in our car and we're constantly working our hand muscles whenever we're at a traffic light, or if there's an area where we can just sit and stretch or do yoga while we're waiting in line at the DMV, or if we were encouraged to do push-ups while we wait for our plane to arrive at the airport. We all know that obesity is an epidemic, but we do so little to prevent it. A lot of people rationalize that away, they say that I don't have the time, but that's a lie. The reality is that we do not use the time that we already have because it's not the societal norm to do so. In fact, it's the opposite, it's frowned upon if you act that way in public. And I know that may sound a little bit off track, but it's not. It's basically the essence of everything that I'm trying to say. We define what's acceptable behavior and what's not. In Heroes of New Earth, it's acceptable to wish death upon people you don't know. In Call of Duty, it's acceptable to yell over the voice chat about how big your 12-year-old baby penis is. In Planetside 2, we're still growing as a game and as a community, so there is a lot that's still up in the air. And our issues are not all that big. Not yet. But I believe that we should always help new players who are confused, instead of ranting about how much they suck. I believe that we shouldn't send messages to the other faction saying how terrible they are when you kill them or stomp them or whatever, or vice versa. You shouldn't be getting messages from people who killed you. I believe that we shouldn't be blowing up Sunderers to place our own in the same spot, or crushing allied vehicles with galaxies. I believe that there is a time and a place when team killing is appropriate. And this is obviously a controversial topic, many of you don't agree with my methodology on when it's appropriate to team kill, and if there's one thing that people will rant about in the comments section, it'll be that, I know it's going to be that, and that's because people are oftentimes short-sighted and they focus on one thing that they don't agree with, instead of all of the things that they do. On the other side of things, it's not only up to us, either. The developers need to get involved. When you look at Buzzcut Psycho, and everybody's probably at least heard the name, he's a douche. Right? No surprise there, he's probably the most bottom-of-the-barrel scum that has ever or will ever plague the Planetside 2 community, but even he shouldn't be getting death threats from other players. He should not be getting his home address posted in Yell Chat. And even the fact that he has will tell you how many people absolutely hated him. But this problem should not have even existed in the first place. Someone who is consistently creating a profoundly negative impact on the game's community should not have been able to play the game, period. As I understand it, SOE did not ban him, they did not take steps to mitigate the harm that he was doing, and I can see that for a number of different reasons. The first is that the Enclave was a big part of balancing the population out on Matherson, and despite his actions in-game, Buzzcut Psycho was actually, uh, he provided a lot of well-constructed and even level-headed feedback 
on the game's design from a perspective of a large, organized outfit leader. And this is valuable and important. But eventually his outfit, the Enclave, left the game anyway, and all we're left with was the hate that he helped cultivate. So instead of taking a stand against someone who had a negative impact on the community, you know, maybe setting an example and shifting priorities to population balance to compensate for that disruption, SOE did the easy thing, which was to do nothing at all. Just like the military relies on a chain command, we as the players need to know that the developers and moderators have our back, and that they intend to help us reinforce that positive atmosphere. And of course there are going to be pieces to the puzzle that I am missing, but this is my perception of the issue as it stands. With that said though, Planetside 2 is a very casual game right now. You're usually not competing for kills, though some people who are off in their own little worlds still might be. You're generally just trying to stay alive and capture the objective. This is a common goal that everyone rallies behind. And since death means next to nothing, it's not like you can blame a single person for ruining your chances at taking over that biolab. This makes the job very easy for developers because they don't have to worry about people instantly getting blasted through messages in-game, or harassed via the voice comms, you know, saying that they're horrible or that they should uninstall a game. I do not have all of the answers, or even ideas that can address some of the problems that we're currently facing as a community, or the problems that we will face, but there are two things that I would like to see happen more, both on the forums and on this channel. I would like to see more respect overall. So when someone posts something that you do not agree with, as long as you can see that they have some reasoning behind it, then you should reply not by attacking them because you don't agree, but by sharing your own experiences. So if somebody says, shotguns are OP, I always keep dying to them, shotguns are for scrubs who don't know how to play the game, then you can respond with something like, I used to die to shotguns a lot too, but now I make a conscious effort to stay away from doorways, and I've been able to deal with shotgun users a lot easier since then. And boom, right? Helpful comment, mind blown. So that's the first thing. Just try to be respectful when you can. I mean, I understand that uh, sometimes we're having a bad day and we just want to lash out. That's fine. That's human. Just uh, understand that there are repercussions for that. But getting back to it, try to be respectful, offer advice, basically don't have knee-jerk reactions. Now let's say that that person continues on and he says something utterly asinine, right? Like, uh, wow, are you a noob? You must play NC because you have no idea what you're talking about and all you have are shotguns. Then you do two things, you downvote the post, and you do not respond to it. There are many people who just can't be helped, and giving them something else to fire off at is exactly what they're looking for. Now eventually, eventually, that guy will see that he's just being ignored constantly, and that his posts aren't showing up because they keep getting downvoted, and eventually, slowly, that player is either going to A, change their language, become more educated, and generally post less stupid comments, or B, they'll take it as a personal challenge to deliberately post obnoxious things out of spite, in which case I'll just block them from the channel, or C, they'll go troll somewhere else. But in any case, it's a win for all of us. So those are the two things that I would like you to take away from this episode, if nothing else. Be more respectful to one another, back your arguments with some logic, share your experiences instead of forcing them on others, and just downvote and ignore those people who are bringing undue negativity to the channel, and the forums, and the community at large. If this video has been interesting, helpful, or entertaining, please feel free to like, subscribe, and tell your friends about the channel. And if you have anything interesting to add to the discussion, or if you agree or disagree with the state of the community and where we may or may not be headed, then just leave a comment or a video response below. And a video response is better, I do love watching those from all of you, and I don't get nearly as much as I would like. Thanks very much folks, we're all signing off. to catch a ride!